A big WWE title match has been cancelled, but first, Adam Copeland is officially All Elite. Last night, AEW would hold their first ever Wrestle Dream event, a show held in tribute to New Japan Pro Wrestling founder Antonio Inoki, who sadly passed away almost one year to the day. Let's start with what happened at the end of the show, where a major debut would take place. Christian Cage would put the TNT Championship on the line against Seattle hometown boy Darby Allen in a two out of three falls match, with Allen quickly gaining an advantage, pinning Cage for the first fall. However, the tide soon turned when Christian dropped Allen onto the steel steps, with him landing awkwardly on his shoulder. This led to Cage winning the second fall as Darby wasn't able to re-enter the ring in time. The most pivotal point of the match came when Cage attempted to use the championship belt in order to take the challenger out for good. However, he was stopped by Nick Wayne, who was of course Darby's close friend, but in a surprising twist, Wayne then took the belt and struck Darby himself, assisting Cage in securing the pin. This moment would then lead to Luchasaurus and Sting coming down to the ring to support their respective sides. However, the icon would find himself outnumbered. He would then be positioned in place for a concerto, this before the lights went out as a video played on the big screen as a leather jacketed man made his way to the arena. A familiar entrance song would then hit as Metalingus filled the arena before the rated R superstar Edge made his way onto the stage to a huge pop. Though at first it seemed like Edge, now going by his real name of Adam Copeland, was aligning with his longtime tag partner Christian as he looked to be finishing off where the heels left off with the concerto. He instead wipes out Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus before Cage scrambled out of the ring. Edge's contract would of course expire at the end of September, this a few weeks after his last WWE match in August against Sheamus. Whilst it was known that his contract was coming to an end, there was never any official confirmation that he was AEW bound beyond clues and rumours, although reports have revealed that those within both companies expected it to happen. Adam would later speak with the media after the show where it was revealed that he's joined AEW on a full-time basis, with him expected to appear week in, week out for the promotion. And during the scrum, AEW president Tony Khan would note, I'd like to announce Adam Copeland has officially signed with AEW. And something I'm really excited about, uh, something that I think is going to set this apart and something that got me even more excited about Adam being here is this is full time. Adam's going to be with us every week. He's going to wrestle. He's a full time part of the AEW roster. I think it's going to be a long time since anybody's seen Adam Copeland wrestle as much in it and at the level he's been in AEW. He's already been doing great stuff. He's wrestling at the highest level in recent years, but he's going to be here on a weekly basis. And it's something I'm so excited about because that's great news for us in AEW. Copeland himself would then discuss his motivations for joining AEW with him citing the sheer amount of fresh talent that he's never worked with before and he would say, part of coming here is that I wanted to contribute. I wanted to help and I just felt like here I'd really be able to do that and have the opportunity to do that. And I look at an entire fresh roster of faces and, and so many talent that I've never laid hands on before. And that, that to me, as a person who is uh, driven by challenges, that for me was the biggest thing. Like I've never been in a ring with Samoa Joe. I've never stood in a ring with Sting before tonight. After 31 years in the industry, that's never happened. Um, and then I see a guy like Nick Wayne or I see Swerve. There's, there's just so many possibilities here. And for me at this stage of my career, that is so enticing. That is so exciting. That is so, uh, you know, I, I said it out there <clears throat> after the fact, when I came back out there tonight, I felt free. Elsewhere on the scrum, Adam would discuss how a deal came together for him to use the song Metalingus in AEW, with him revealing that his friendship with the band helped the situation. And he would say, So Alter Bridge are my friends. Uh, Mark Tremonti, who wrote the song, is a very good friend. So that, that song's with me wherever I go. And that was very important to me. It, it, to me, uh, I've always been very musically motivated. And, and I think it sets the tone for a character. And it also sets the tone for Adam to get in that place. And that music, from the first time I heard it in, in Mark's house, after I dropped a beer in his foyer, um, after just meeting him, uh, <laughs> he played that for me with his scratch lyrics on it. And I, I was out with a neck injury. I was like, can I have that song? He was like, absolutely, dude. And we just met. And 20 years later, here we are, and I called Mark and I said, hey, what do you think? He goes, absolutely. Absolutely, dude. You know, that answer is not going to change. And that was really, really 
pivotal important to me because it, it would have felt weird coming out to something else. According to a report from Fightful Select, the signing of Copeland will fill the huge gap left by CM Punk at the top of the card, with the rated R superstar being praised for his willingness to help in a number of ways, and they would report. We're told that Copeland will have a significant presence within the company and has expressed his willingness to help in a variety of capacities. One longtime talent said that Copeland spoke about him filling the gap that CM Punk left behind in that he'll be helpful and not cause any issues internally. That person did reiterate that Punk himself had been helpful to many within the company as well. It has since been confirmed that Adam will take on Christian Cage's monster Luchasaurus this Wednesday on AEW Dynamite, with this being followed by an appearance on AEW Collision this Saturday night. For our last Adam Copeland related news, some recent trademark filings have been uncovered that appear to reveal some phrases that he's going to use going forward as he has applied for the term legend, this spelt with a D, to spell edge in the middle of the word, as well as the rogue, cope, and iconoclast all words that could be used as nicknames, finishing moves, and simply for merchandising purposes. And next up, Tony Khan has discussed a former AEW champion signing for WWE. Elsewhere at the Wrestle Dream Media Scrum, AEW president Tony Khan would be asked about recent news that former AEW TBS champion Jade Cargill has signed with WWE, this following the recent expiration of her All Elite contract. Cargill, who had been absent since Double or Nothing 2023, made a notable return on the September 9 episode of AEW Collision to challenge TBS champion Chris Statlander. However, the champion would retain, with this being Jade's final appearance in an AEW ring. Cotton would confirm that he had put a large offer on the table to retain Cargill's services. However, an agreement was unable to be reached, and he would note, I uh, knew Jade's contract had been, you know, taken down, and we were talking about a new contract, and I was very interested in Jade coming back, and we were having a negotiation, and I offered, I made a very big offer, and uh, I thought it was a very fair offer, and I think she was considering it and then she asked for a bigger offer and then I went up again and I kind of thought that was going to do it and then it, it didn't which I was surprised because to be honest I came up to a number that was higher than her original ask so I don't know what I would have had to do at that point so I was a little surprised I think I tried to handle it when I when we were down to the nitty-gritty and we were in the final couple weeks and we still hadn't agreed to something then it was at the point where I said okay well if you aren't gonna stay I want to give you the best possible exit and I have only good things to say about Jade. I really enjoyed working with her. She was a great part of AEW. She's always welcome here. I tried to give her the best possible send off I could. And next up, a huge AEW rematch is on the horizon. Now let's get to another story from the AEW Wrestle Dream pay-per-view itself, where the Young Bucks, the Guns, the Lucha Brothers, as well as Orange Cassidy and Hook would compete to become the number one contenders for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. During the match, Ray Phoenix would be taken to the back after suffering from an apparent injury, leaving his brother Penta to fight the rest of the match alone. In the end, it was Matt and Nick Jackson that left with their hands raised, moving on to set up yet another rematch between themselves and FTR, who would retain their belts later in the night against Aussie Open. That was another match that saw a competitor leave injured, with Mark Davis later taking to X to reveal that he snapped his wrist during the contest. We now await more information on the medical statuses of both Phoenix and Davis. With that said, we also now wait to find out more on when FTR vs Young Bucks 4 will go down, with there being potential for it to happen as soon as this Wednesday's anniversary edition of AEW Dynamite, although that is yet to be confirmed as of this recording. And next, a big WWE title match has been cancelled. This past Saturday night, NXT No Mercy would see current NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch retain her title against former champion Tiffany Stratton under Extreme Rules, a bout that left the man far from 100%. Shortly after the match came to a close, Lynch would take to social media to post an image of a laceration that she suffered on her arm, something that required 12 stitches to close up. According to a new report from Fightful Sun, Select, the injury means that she's no longer able to compete on tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw, this where she was originally scheduled to defend her NXT title against Tegan Knox, who was at ringside at No Mercy. The report confirms that Becky has been unable to be cleared to compete in time for the title defense, and the match is no longer on the cards as of this recording. It's likely that the match will now be delayed to a later point. And before you go, make sure you check out what's next for the WWE releases of September 2023. 
है